brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that sends 5% of your monthly plan price to your favorite charity. No contracts, nationwide coverage, risk-free guarantee. Learn more at CharityMobile.com. We continue, after a brief hiatus, the examination of Father R. Gerald Culleton, a 19th century Catholic priest, his examination of what the reign of Antichrist will look like according to Scripture, a pr approved private revelation, and the Fathers of the Church and other notable sources. And so today, we continue, again, after a brief hiatus of a month or so, with the look at the earliest private prophecy. That would be private revelation. We begin this look here with looking at the patristics and some books that had been under consideration for sacred scripture by the earliest councils of the church, but were not deemed to be worthy of being included in that. Hence why they are considered to be private revelation. Though it is worth noting here, the good priest would not examine these documents if the church had deemed them to be dangerous to your faith or anything else. So these are like any other private revelation. You are free to accept or discard them at your will. With that, the reign of Antichrist, earliest private prophecy. Introductory remarks. In dividing the prophetic text into scriptural and non-scriptural, instead of scriptural, patristic, and private prophecies, we have been influenced by the theologians who claim that there are very few notions about Antichrist on which the fathers of the Church agree. Since such is the case, we must consider all that matter on which they disagree or seem to disagree as private interpretation of scriptural prophecy, and therefore is open to question. The fact, however, that the sayings of the fathers, which in fact have the value of tradition, are found in this section, is not to be taken to mean any disrespect on our part. We have chosen for the reason given above and for convenience to put all non-scriptural prophecy in chronological order. Our readers will readily distinguish the ideas on which all agree from those which are con controverted or at least expressed by only one or other prophet or commentator. Likewise, we have put all texts on one level, so to speak. Those who do not claim the gift of prophecy, and those who do. Those who most certainly merit our attention, and those of quite doubtful nature. This, too, is necessitated not only by convenience, but by the fact that our purpose is to give our readers all the texts we could lay our hands on, so that within the compass of one book it would be possible for all to survey at first hand the thinking of the whole Christian world on the Antichrist through the ages. We have only this caution to add. Be very careful not to put great faith in statements of a private nature emanating from only one source unless you have the proper ecclesiastical guarantee that the source in question merits special credence. We have deliberately omitted the ravings of the 16th and century, 17th century fanatics who wasted much good paper trying to absolve themselves by making the papacy antichrist. Even all their own followers have long since repudiated their bigotry. And likewise, we omit the rantings of certain sect leaders of our own day who try to revive the papal antichrist legend by choosing some letters to be alleged to be on the tiara and omitting others. Let us take all or none. We finally consign to the ash can the trash ground on sectarian presses, which chooses dates for the second coming of Christ and changes them as the fixed dates arrive. We even turn a deaf ear to sectarian speeches, which put the second coming just around the corner and the preachers and their flock in white robes waiting with outstretched arms with the rest of mankind are gathered up by the avenger. The reason is evident. God has reserved for himself a knowledge of exact dates and we believe even of approximate times. Signs he tell us he will give, signs which the chosen elect alone, but all the chosen, high and low, will recognize. So let us be content to do exactly as he says. Watch and pray, for ye know not the day nor the hour. From the book of Enoch. The Lord say, said unto Michael, Go, bind some Jaza and his associates, who have united themselves with women so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for seventy generations in the valley of the earth, till the day of their judgment and of their consummation, till the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. In those days they shall be led to the abyss of fire, and the torment and the prison in which they shall be confined forever. 
and whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from henceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations, and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers, because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wrong from the face of the earth, and let every evil work come to an end, and let the plant of righteousness and truth appear, and it shall prove a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy forevermore. Enoch was hidden, and no one of the children of the men knew where he was hidden. His activities had to do with the watchers, and his day were with the holy ones. And Enoch was raised aloft on the chariots of the Spirit, and and his name vanished among them. When sin and righteousness, blasphemy and violence, and all kind of deeds increase, and apostasy and transgression and uncleanness increase, a great chastisement shall come from heaven. I was born the seventh of the first week, while justice reigned yet upon earth. And after me in the second week will come a great evil, the deluge, and in that week the first consummation will take place. Then one man will be saved, and after this week injustice will again grow. And then in the third week, towards its end, a man shall be chosen, Abraham, as a plant of just judgment, and he will then grow as a plant in justice for all eternity. Then in the fourth week, towards its end, The visions of the holy and just will appear, and a law for all generations, and an ark shall be prepared for them. Then in the fifth week towards its end, the house of glory and domination shall be built for eternity. Then in the sixth week, those who live in that time shall be blinded, and their hearts shall fall into iniquity, far from wisdom. And then a man will ascend to heaven, and at the end of this week, the house of domination shall be destroyed by fire, and the race of the powerful root shall be dispersed. Then in the seventh week, a perverse generation shall arise. Many will be their works, but all shall be works of abomination. And at the end of this week, the just branches of the plant of just shall be chosen, for the end that the science of God's creation shall be given them a hundredfold. For who is the child of man who can hear the voice of the Holy One without being moved, and who can think his thoughts, and who can contemplate all the works of heaven? Who is he who can see the heavens, and who is he that may know the works of heaven? And how could he see a soul or a spirit? And how could he speak of such? How could he rise to see their workings or act as they do? And who is the child of man who may know the length of the breadth of heaven? Or upon what base it is founded? How great is the number of stars and where they rest, the lights of heaven? Then there will be another week, the eighth. This week shall be that of justice, and a sword shall be given to to justice, that judgment may be accomplished, and the oppressors and the sinners will be broken by the hands of the just. And towards the end of this week, the just shall acquire dwelling places because of their justice, and a house shall be erected for the great king of an eternal splendor. And after this, in the ninth week, the judgment of the just shall be unveiled to all men throughout the universe, and all the works of the impious shall disappear from the earth, and the number inscribed for perdition, and all men shall see the path of righteousness. And then, in the tenth week, at its seventh part, will take place the great eternal judgment. He shall exercise judgment and vengeance among the angels. And then the first heaven shall disappear and pass away, and a new heaven will appear, and all the powers of heaven shall shine eternally, seven times greater. And after this week shall come weeks, numerous weeks, which shall pass on, innumerable and eternal, for kindness and justice. And from thence sin will be no longer named forever. Woe to you, ye rich, for ye have trusted in your riches, and from your riches shall ye depart, because ye have not remembered the Most High in the days of your riches. Woe to you who work godlessness and glory in lying and extol them. Ye shall perish, and ye know no happy life shall be yours. Woe to them who twist the words of uprightness and transgress the eternal law, and transform themselves into what they were not, into sinners. They shall be trodden underfoot and upon the earth. In those days make ready, ye righteous, to raise your prayers as a memorial, and place them as a testimony before the angels, that they may place the sin of the sinners for a memorial before the Most High. In those days the nation shall be stirred up, and the families of the nation shall arise on the day of destruction. And in those days the destitute shall go forth and carry off their children, and they shall abandon them so that their children shall perish through them. Yea, they shall abandon their children that are still sucklings, and not return to them, and shall have no pity on their beloved ones. And again I swear to you, ye sinners, that sin is prepared for a day of unceasing bloodshed. And they who worship stones and grave images of gold and silver and wood and stone and clay, and those who worship impure spirits and demons and all kinds of idols not according to knowledge, shall get no manner of help from them. And they shall become godless by reason of the folly of their hearts, and their eyes shall be blinded through the fear of their hearts and through visions in their dreams. Through these they shall become godless and fearful. For they shall have wrought all their work in a lie, and shall have worshipped a stone. Therefore in an instant shall they perish. 
But in those days, blessed are all they who accept the words of wisdom and understand them and observe the paths of the Most High and walk in the path of his righteousness and become not godless with the godless, for they shall be saved. Woe to you who spread evil to your neighbors, for you shall be slain in Sheol. Woe to you who make deceitful and false measures, and to them who cause bitterness on the earth, for they shall thereby be utterly consumed. Woe to you who build your houses through the grievous toil of others, and all their building materials are the bricks and stones of sin. I tell you, ye shall have no peace. Woe to them who reject the measure and eternal heritage of their fathers, and whose souls follow after idols, for they shall have no rest. Woe to them who work unrighteousness and help oppression, and slay their neighbors until the day of the great judgment. For he shall cast down your glory, and bring affliction on your hearts, and shall arouse his fierce indignation, and destroy you all with the sword. And all the holy and righteous shall remember your sins. And in those days in one place... The fathers together with their sons shall be smitten, and brothers one with another shall fall in death till the streams flow with their blood. For a man shall not withhold his hand from slaying his sons, and his sons' sons and the sinners shall not withhold his hand from his honored brother. From dawn till sunset they shall slay one another, and the horse shall walk up to the breast in the blood of sinners, and the chariot shall be submerged to its height. In those days the angels shall descend into the secret places, and gather together into one place all those who brought down sin, and the Most High will arise on that day of judgment to execute great judgment among sinners. Sinners will alter and twist the words of righteousness in many ways, and will speak wicked words and lie and practice great deceits and, and write books concerning their words. Another book Enoch wrote for his son Methuselah, and for those who will come after him and keep the law in these last days, ye who have done good shall wait for these days till an end is made of those who work evil, and an end of the might of the transgressors. And wait ye indeed till sin has passed away, for the name shall be blotted out of the book of life, and out of the holy books, and their seed shall be destroyed forever, and their spirits shall be slain, and they shall cry and make lamentation in a place that is a chaotic wilderness, and in the fire shall they burn, for there is no earth there. That is just the beginning of Father Culleton's work on private revelation. The Book of Enoch is something we hear about, but not a lot of Catholics talk about the book so much. We hear about it, but not there's not much in the prophecy world that examines it. So I'm glad that we managed to cover Father R. Gerald Culleton's work on that this week. In the next installment, we'll be going into some fairly obscure private revelations that the Church has not put a ban on or anything. They're just considered private revelation. So I'm curious what you thought of this, so let me know in the comments. Do you find the Book of Enoch to be fascinating, at least what you heard of it, which is, again, a small portion? There were citations there to chapter 99 of the Book of Enoch to give you an idea of its length compared to the excerpts you heard. But let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, please. And to like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help, as does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.